Well, hi, this is uh, hopefully the first in a uh, long series of simple college cooking with uh, me, your boy, Immortal Sin. Um, I'm inspired to do it because I'm actually going to be going back to school myself um, as a law student. And so with a lot of changes, you know, I'm just looking for ways to simplify. And I remember my days of being uh, an undergrad, just cooking simply but still thoroughly, always having, you know, what I like and uh, not necessarily being dependent on a cafeteria. So I just figured that I would um, be sharing some of those things with you guys. And um, if appreciated, um, I can do a whole lot more. Um, this series won't be following any formal or classic techniques, nor will it be stylistic in just about any way. Um, it's just going to be some down-home Louisiana-style home cooking techniques that I want to share with those of you who may be interested. Um, chief among these techniques are the facts that you'll almost always see me gather my ingredients beforehand. Like, uh, today it's going to be spaghetti, so we already have tomato paste, um, diced tomatoes, um, a tomato sauce. I tend to use like a seasonal and all-in-one Creole seasoning. I pretty much put it on everything, so I definitely feel that that would come in handy. I'm going to be using garlic today. It's okay. You can admit, uh, omit that if you don't want it. Um, I just have some uh, overall Italian seasoning next to that. Um, you may notice that I'm actually going to be using fettuccine as opposed to um, vermicelli or uh, spaghetti or really any other kind of noodles. And the reason for that is quite simply that you get more for the same price. So I would definitely suggest that going forward. And I'll be using premium lean ground beef. Um, since it is extremely lean, I will be uh, adding a little extra, um, extra, extra virgin olive oil to it. And uh, I'll be using some red wine as well, um, because I really don't think it's uh, out of the ordinary to suggest that college students would have some form of liquor on hand. Of course, you can omit the wine if you don't want to use it. And uh, have a full-size Dutch oven along with a um, pot for boiling. I already have the heat on the boiling pot with just some water and salt already added. Make the water wait on you so you don't have to wait on it. Just have it boiling earlier. Um... The other thing that, uh, the other technique that you'll notice is that I really don't measure or time just about anything. And I think that that's definitely something that I would suggest to people who are just learning to cook or maybe know a few things. It's just so convenient when you don't waste your time doing that. And um, you'll very quickly learn ample amounts as you see them moving forward. So um, let's begin. I hope you enjoy these. Give me plenty of feedback to know how I can improve this. Um, I will definitely be uh, investing in um, better recording technology as well as stabilizers and things of that sort. So um, give me some feedback, share these with your friends, and uh, let's make a series. Okay, uh, meat's frying. Um, I just have it in a little block for now. I'm going to use a um, just a small little spoon to spread it out some and just add a couple drops of extra virgin olive oil. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because this meat is extremely lean, so it's not going to produce much of its own fat. Uh, with ground beef or ground chuck, I would not do that because it's going to make more than enough for itself. And um, something you may notice, too, is that I'm only using it on about a medium heat. One of the biggest mistakes that first-time uh, cooks do is that they always want to cook everything on the highest uh, heat possible. And I would always suggest starting off at low to medium. You can always adjust up or down if you need it. But if you're starting off at the highest possible, there's really nowhere for you to go if you notice that something's not going your way other than down, but it's usually too late. Meat is continuing to progress. Um, because now it's getting a good bit brown, I've actually lowered the temperature, just kind of spread it out a good bit. And I'm letting it cook over before I flip it a couple more times just to make sure it's thoroughly brown. Uh, the spoon that I'm using here, I'm going to keep separate from my other spoons and things of that sort because I don't want to cross-contaminate. When I'm done with the meat, I'll go ahead and put that in the wash and just be done with it. And that's just a safety precaution that you want to take. And for you uh, vegetarians and vegans out there, keep in mind, of course, you don't have to add meat. You can always make this as a uh, marinara. And uh, I would say that tofu doesn't work as well. So you can also make it with chicken or turkey or several other kinds of meat. I've heard you can do it just pretty well with pork as well, though I've never actually tried myself. Okay, uh, meat's thoroughly browned and also fully crumbled, so I've discarded the other spoon for uh, safety reasons and have washed my hands, as you should always be doing. 
I decided to uh, chop up an onion just because it's a preference of mine. So I'll be adding that and a little bit of garlic now just to get a fry on it. Just to dab more of the EVOO and we'll go from there. Okay, everything added. Um, I'm going to put a little seasonal on this after I let them sit separately and kind of just simmer down and uh, wilt on their own. Then I'll be mixing them together and I'll be adding my diced tomatoes as well as my tomato paste. Alright, you can see that I've got some crumblings at the bottom of the pot, on, especially on the upper right hand corner. So what I'm going to do is just add some wine to that. This is called deglazing basically. I'm going to stir that in as hard as I can. Um, that's going to scrape it up from the bottom because that's still a lot of flavor and it's not exactly burned at this point. So that's something you definitely want to maintain. Also, it's going to clean the bottom of your pot and help stop the sauce uh, from actually burning as it is cooking. Okay, so I've added the uh, seasonal. I've also added some mushrooms, as you can tell, and uh, I know that's definitely not on the top of everyone's list, so no real need to worry about that. I'm just making this to my taste, but of course you can do without that. Um, again, I've added the seasonal to it. How much? Who knows? Remember, I don't measure. Uh, I pretty much just make one quick loop around the pot, I guess you could say. And I'm about to add the um, Italian seasoning, so kind of like this. Just take it. And there, the top of the pot's covered. You're good. Okay, just added the diced tomatoes as well as the tomato paste. About to stir that in. I found that what helps is just take the can that you had your diced tomatoes in. Uh, do one can full of water. Put that in, and it's going to make stirring that in so much easier. The water will eventually cook out, so you don't have to worry a thing about what it does to your flavor. And we'll speak a little bit more about that later on. You may want to turn your heat up just a little bit here, maybe to a high, medium, or a uh, beginner's high, I guess you could say. And uh, that'll make this process a little bit faster, so we'll get it into those um, tomatoes as well as paste is completely mixed and stirred in. Okay, so we finally have what's pretty much beginning to look like a sauce. And to be honest, if you wanted to do this homemade style, you'd really just repeat the last couple of steps that we did. Just keep adding tomato paste, tomato sauce, and maybe some diced or stewed uh, tomatoes. But that is pretty much the antithesis of what we're trying to do here. And so at this point, about the only thing left to do is add um, the thickener, or the filler as I like to call it, and it's going to be this pretty much right here. Um, I don't have any, I don't make any brand endorsements or anything like that. But just for the sake of familiarity, Ragu, Prego, Walmart brand, Target brand, Del Monte, all of those things work just fine. Any of their tomato sauces or their um, spaghetti sauces, the marinaras, just put that in as a filler and you'll see the results in just a second. Okay, filler's mixed in, and so we're going to let it simmer down. Uh, you may be thinking, well, it's time to chow down, and I would say no. The primary reason for that is because the flavors have not had a chance to mix, nor will they until they've simmered at low heat, at least for a while. So what we're going to do is take the jar that you had your filler in, or your can, or whatever kind of filler you use, and just like we did with the tomatoes, just add water. In fact, I'd probably add about two, but we're just going to do one for now. That's all that's really needed. We're going to mix it in, and basically what we're going to do is kick it back down to the same thickness it was before we added the water. The reason we're doing that is because it's going to buy us time to let it simmer and let the flavors mix without it thickening so much that the bottom starts to burn against the bottom of the uh, pot. And... If you're really doing this homemade style, you'd probably be doing this for at least two, three, four, five, or even more hours to get the desired flavor. That's one reason I've used like for a filler, because it's already been simmered to that amount. So you're going to get a lot of that flavor kicked in as it simmers with the ingredients that we already added. 
So again, I'm not going to place a time on it because I don't measure and I don't really time anything that's not baked. So we'll just kind of let it simmer for a while. And again, the key is to look for the same thickness that we had before we added this water. Uh, we'll see them. Turn your heat down to about a low and just let it stay there. So here we are about 25 minutes in. You definitely want to give this a stir every 10 to 15 minutes just to, you know, switch up the bottom, make sure everything's heating up evenly and you don't want anything burning. Just give it a nice little even stir. That's pretty much all you need. We're getting there uh, for the consistency. Not quite where we want it to be, but we'll let it go for a little bit longer. Okay, at this point we're about an hour and 20 minutes in, and we've pretty much hit the consistency of where we were. Um, it's a little bit more liquidy, but I kind of want it that way, and that's for the noodles, and we'll discuss that in just a second. In fact, speaking of, I'm going to go ahead and put them up to high. My pot's already very warm, so it should be boiling in less than about a minute or so, because again, we've kept the water warm the whole way through, and we'll be adding those. Just follow the directions on your noodles. Um, if there are no directions, basically for most noodles, just have the water boiling first, put them in about eight minutes, take them out and strain them and you're fine. All right, uh, this is pretty much the end. We're done here. Uh, noodles are done, sauce is the right consistency. The reason I still have it cooking is because quite frankly, I just like to be uh, a one pot person, so I often will throw the noodles in. I've made them slightly al dente, um, a little bit firmer than normal. I'm just going to throw them in the pot, toss them over, let them cook for about a minute there, and then they should be fine. Or if you just want to do it the traditional way, which is, of course, to um, pour your sauce on top of the noodles, feel free. But at this point, we're done. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this first one. I hope to make many more. Of course, there'll be many changes. I hope to improve them, both the lighting, the uh, hardware, the software, just about the whole experience. And um, give me some feedback. Just let me know what you want to see, wh what are some things that I can improve. And above all else, make sure you subscribe and uh, recommend to your friends. Until next time, bye-bye.